What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Guru951. Welcome back. Welcome aboard. Thanks for supporting the channel and the community so long. It has been absolutely impossible without your support and encouragement. I cannot thank you enough. Today, I want to cover a video of these mysteriously vanishing planets, which I have featured in other videos, and I really think they deserve a little more focus. Maybe, you know, somebody out there is holding the key to this mystery. Or maybe it's just a bug. But so far, that bug has been unresolved. It has to do with some of the stars in the Aitken Double Star Catalog that was published in 1932 by U.S. astronomer Robert Grant Aitken. It's a book of over 17,000 binary stars, although in Elite, there are only 10 of them. I myself am a huge fan of constellations. If you're unfamiliar with what a constellation is, well, there are 88 of them, and many of them have their roots in ancient mythologies and astronomy charts, such as the most ancient of star charts, the Babylonian charts. The Greeks used them, the Romans used them, the Far East used them, the Polynesians used them. The entire globe used them, many of them for navigational aid, such as Orion's belt. And it was in the research of those constellations that I stumbled upon these anomalies, and they are all based on observation of binary stars. These are the following 10 systems. Now what you'll notice is that the primary system name may be HIP 16712, for instance, but the binary star that's in that system is named ADS 2612. And of those 10, four of them, the ADS star is the secondary star in the system. One of them is in a very interesting location that I think if you are a Raxel hunter or a dark wheel hunter in this game, someone that might be into the mysteries of the game, you'll be familiar with the Cassiopeia constellation or the mythology of Cassiopeia, the mother of Andromeda. And some of you might even be familiar with this nebula in really close proximity to HR 266, which is ADS 784b. Obviously, looking at the LBN 623 Nebula, this is known as the Ghost of Christmas Past Nebula, within the borders of the Cassiopeia constellation, as you can see, it does have a very strange and unique look. With a little bending of the rules, this could even look like a portal. But of course, we know, based on science, the reason why it looks this way. But there's always room for a little imagination, isn't there? This is also known as 26 Origae. First thing we want to do is look at it from the galaxy map view in realistic mode. As you can see, it's neighboring another star, 26 Origae. But if you spin the map around, you'll catch a glimpse of a third star system, PMSC 05322 plus 3026. That system is hidden in between those two. Now this close proximity to this system in the middle is going to create an anomaly of its own. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. Now, Origae is one of the 88 official constellations. It was first charted by Ptolemy. In Latin, it means charioteer. In Mesopotamian, its name was Gam, meaning a farmer's scimitar or crescent. To the Greeks, he was the subterranean deity Erectonius, son of Hephaestus, the god of craftsmanship. To some, he was the builder of chariots and was said to have been placed in the heavens by Zeus himself. It was believed that he was raised by Athena in Athens, the goddess who had overlooked many of the great Greek cities of ancient times, and who is also rumored to have helped the heroes Perseus, Heracles, Bellerophon, and Jason and the Argonauts. Her feud said to have caused the Trojan War. But let's look at some of the observations in the system. And of course, having the eighth moon around a gas giant only makes this even a little more interesting because of the association with the dark wheel and the rumors that they have a low-powered station orbiting the eighth moon of an unnamed gas giant, which still, to our knowledge, nobody has found. Now let's look at the last system that I want to cover, which is ADS 9338AC. This is also known as 29 Bootis. As you can see here, this is the system map.
Bootis is an ancient constellation that can be found in the Babylonian and Mesopotamian star charts. To them, he was known as Shupa, or Enlil. Enlil was the highest and most powerful god in the entire Sumerian culture. Homer in the Odyssey referred to this constellation. According to the Greeks, he was the son of Demeter. To others, he was a plowman driving oxen across the fields. And in another myth, he was a grape farmer that made wine so strong it was poisonous. The brightest star of the Bootis constellation is Arcturus. Arcturus was a great hunter. He was king of Arcus. He was the son of Zeus and Callisto. Callisto, also known as the Great Bear. And even known as the Guardian of the Bear also known as the Ursa Major constellation, the Big Dipper. In the world of astronomy, there are things called voids and supervoids. These are giant patches of sky that when you point a telescope at, you will not be able to see another galaxy. Bootis is home to one of the largest supervoids, known as the Bootis Supervoid. And this is the interesting thing about constellations. The way the developers and writers have integrated mythology into what appears to be a very hidden narrative which is written in the stars within the stories of those stars. As you can see here in Arcturus, it does have the planet Arcus. It's also got several interesting named stations and planets. Such as Major, Discovery, is the major discovery the body and the station in between those two planets, or is there something more to it? This captivates a lot of my interest because Arcturus and the system itself has been a huge source of my theory crafting and basically of something that I've been working on for a very long time. I'll keep you warm and safe in my people's zoo where I can watch you for all time's sake. But this discovery here among these stars, which is kind of a newer thing I had stumbled upon. So it's interesting to see that it came back to that theory that it ended up linking back. And uh, basically what I'm doing right now is working on getting that out to you soon. There is something very strange going on. Now in this system, these are the bodies that will vanish. If anybody else can find or knows about any other locations that exhibit these sort of behaviors, I would love to hear it in the comments section below. I'm sure the entire community would as well. Now, many people are going to see this and say, uh, you know, that's just Stellar Forge just having trouble with that double star catalog and it just didn't do its thing right. And of course, that is a very valid, you know, reasoning. It is a possibility, but I like to think that maybe there's something a little more to it as well. Plus, at the same time, being able to document this discovery so that everybody can share it with each other and uh, maybe somebody else can figure it out, you know. Now, you're probably wondering about the system in between the two, right? And then this thing over here, how, what about that system there? Well, I can tell you I've been to both of those systems, and I haven't found anything worth of note. Nothing to note except for this weird jumping instance. The PMSC system is so close that it's almost as if the system is inside this system now. You can literally fly past the jump point to it. It's the only place I've ever seen where I can actually bend my jump into witch space. In my opinion, this creates even another anomaly. Once again, if you know of anything like this anywhere else, please share it in the comments below. Everybody, I'm sure, is going to love to hear about it. Whew, I was looking forward to doing that in a really long time. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. I hope to see you once again. For myself and everybody at Recall, take care of my friends. Till next time, this is Guru951, signing out. I may be talking about something that does not exist. Therefore, I'm free to say everything or nothing.